and the mighty dragon swirls in and he's gonna get the camera. Rawr! Hi guys, just having a little fun. It is Friday and you know what that means. It's another episode of the Once and Future Writers Club. Over habits of my heart, I You guys, I'm so excited it's Friday. I just got back from the Texas Library Association uh, conference in Dallas, which was so amazing and fun. I met so many teachers and librarians and I gave away so many books. I actually did a signing for the Camelot Code, The Once and Future Geek, which is my book that comes out in November. And we gave it out to tons of librarians and it was super exciting and fun. Um, but we are gonna get back to business today. We are gonna talk about characters and characters are important business when it comes to your story. If if you don't have characters that come alive on the page, no one is going to want to read it. So you need to know how to craft the perfect characters or maybe kind of the not perfect characters. And we'll get into that, why that is the case in a little bit. But first, you know what time it is. It's time to see the geek thing of the day. It is the Pip Boy from Fallout 4. Um, I don't know how many of you are gamers. I am a huge gamer and I'm a huge fan of the Fallout franchise. And this one actually came in the collector's edition of Fallout 4. There was only a few of them made. I can't remember the exact number. But the cool thing about it, in addition to it looking awesome, um, is it actually works. If I were to put my iPhone in here, I could actually run all the features in the game that are run through the Pip Boy um, right on my wrist. Now, I haven't really done that much because it's really kind of difficult, I think, and cumbersome to try to use a controller and have this, but um, it is possible if you wanted to. Uh, otherwise, you can just, like, you know, wear it to parties or something. <laughs> All right, so let's get down to business. We are talking about characters today, and characters are some of the most important things to consider when creating a story. Now, if you think of some of the films that you've watched or the books that you've read or the TV shows you've enjoyed, you may, after a few years, almost forget what some of the plots were, but you won't forget those characters. They stay with you. They are people you might want to be friends with or that you fall in love with or that you just want to strangle because they're being so awful. We want our readers to care about the people that we put on the page. So how do we go about doing that? First thing we got to decide is who your character is. Is it a person? Is it an animal? Is it a space alien? Is it a dragon? Emmy really wants you to be a dragon. Uh, you have to come up with these characters, who they are. And when you're coming up with who they are, it's not just what species they are, uh, but what they're like. You have to have a physical description. That seems obvious, right? What color hair they have, what color eyes they have, uh, how tall they are, if they're fat or thin or somewhere in between, if they're muscular or weak, um, all that physical stuff. And then you have to decide more of their personality. Uh, what are some of the things they like? What are their favorite foods? Um, what are their strengths? What are their weaknesses? You know, think about the movie Jumanji when they go into the game. Um, each one of their characters has very specific strengths and very specific weaknesses. Like, um, you know, Kevin Hart, um, his weakness was cake. And when he ate cake, he literally exploded in the marketplace, which was hilarious and silly and crazy. And your character's weakness doesn't have to be like, like that but you know like that's the idea there has to be something that makes the story more difficult for them you know because maybe they're afraid of heights or maybe they're not a good runner or whatever it is so the character should be balanced with things they're good at but also things they're not good at. And I know it can be hard to give your character weaknesses because you want them to be cool. You want them to be awesome, and that's totally fine. However, uh, think of it this way. They're going to change during the story. They're going to start out at point A, and then they're going to grow and learn and experience things through your story. And at the end of your story, that's where they get to be awesome because they've learned, you know, the force or, you know, whatever it is. Um, and so you got to leave room in the beginning for your character to grow into awesome. Uh, otherwise, there's no place to go, and it's not a very good story. Um, another thing you might add is, like, what they're afraid of or what they don't want their parents to know, depending on who the character is, um, or what, you know, secret they have from their best friend. Anyway, you take all these things and you write them down, and then you kind of weave them into the story. You don't have to tell everyone every single thing about your character in the first chapter of your story or the first page of your story. 
story. But you, as the author, have to know these things so your character can go through the story and he can act appropriately. So if you have a cliff and your character is afraid of heights, they're going to act much differently than a character who, like, rock climbs all the time, right? Um, and so that will make a difference when you're going through your story. So you need to really know your character. So how do you get to know your character? Well, I like to actually interview my character. What I do is I take a character sheet and I'm gonna post down below a link to a character sheet that you can print out and do yourself. And it will say, what's your character's name? What's your character's age? What's your character's hair color? All those things, all the way down to like, what's your character's deepest secret? You know, what doesn't he want his best friend to know? And so you take all those things and you write them all down and you discover and you know who your character is before you even start writing your story. And then you are gonna be so much more prepared when you write your story. And you don't have to do it for every character in your story. Some of the minor characters, they don't need this. But, you know, maybe if you have two major characters, you could do it. You could even do it for your villain. You know, a villain, if you think about it, if he was writing his own story, he would be the hero of that story. So he has strengths and weaknesses, too. He has goals and desires and things that he wants, um, as well as your main characters, the good guys. So um, figure out who your character is. And if you are having trouble getting started with your character, I would suggest writing down a few things that maybe you like personally, or a few personality traits that you have. I'm not saying you wanna make the character like you exactly. You know, it's not a stand-in for you. That's pretty boring. We want real characters that are unique and fictional. But, you know, it can be a good jumping off point if you're not knowing where to get started. Like, for example, in Scorched, I wanted to get to know Trinity, my main character. And so I made her a gamer because I'm a gamer, and that gave me something to relate to. Um, I also gave her my favorite pizza, uh, which is uh, feta cheese and pineapple pizza. And so I made her have the same pizza taste as me. So you can do that just to kind of start, and then maybe that will lead to you coming up with other things that are very different than you. The second step that you need to take is to figure out what your character wants. Your character has to want something in the story. If you think of Star Wars, Luke Skywalker, he wanted to be a Jedi. He wanted to get off that planet of Tatooine that he was just being a farmer with his uncle and art. He wanted to, you know, fly a spaceship and have adventures. Um, and that was when, you know, he got R2-D2 and uh, Princess Leia came with a message asking for help. That gave him an opportunity to finally seek out what he wanted. But if he didn't want anything, it would be a very boring story. So, who is your character and what do they want? And then the third part of it is, why can't they get it? What's stopping them from getting it? So, for example, if we want to use the Star Wars again, uh, Luke Skywalker can't become a Jedi because he's stuck on Tatooine. He is a farmer. His uncle and aunt need him in that role. And no one ha is offering him a spaceship until the story starts, of course. Um, no one's volunteering to teach him to be a Jedi. He doesn't know he has this grand destiny. He wants something bigger than the life he has, but he doesn't know how to get it. There's a lot standing in his way. So with your story, it should be the same. So your character needs to want something, but it can't be very easy for them to get it, or it wouldn't be a very interesting story. You know, maybe they want to be the king, or they want to pass history, or, you know, they want to beat a video game, whatever it is. They have to want something, and it has to have a reason that they can't get it. And so those are some of the building blocks, the very basic things that you have to decide for your characters before you even start them. So what we are going to do for our lesson today is I'm going to have you fill out a character sheet, interview your character, figure out who they are, what they want, and why they are having trouble getting it. And then uh, the next lesson is going to be a little bit more about plotting, how we're going to take that character and get them eventually what they want. So. Uh, that's today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I might just go now and play a little Fallout <laughs> and uh, leave you with that. And I will talk to you in the next episode of the Once and Future Writers Club. Oh, the habits of my heart.